Welcome back everybody, it's Yogmoth here and we'll be going over another useful guide called Gem Polishing. This is a very important ability that only rogues can do and it's a nice way to make a little bit of money at a low level and I even made a lot of bit of money at a high level too because there are a variety of spells in the game that require gems of a specific grade as a requirement. So we'll be using Vorlop.com. He has a bunch of tips, tricks, and procedures on how to gem polish and we'll be going over those in a little bit more detail here or at least I'll be explaining them. Now gems come in four different grades. We have fragments, uncut, flawed, and finished. And only uncut and finished are required for spells. The other two grades, fragment and flawed, are not usually required at all for anything. So you can find gems in certain areas of the game where uh, creatures will drop gems. Private Cave is an area that drops gems a lot. But the creatures that do drop gems will drop them in a random grade. Right? We're not sure what grade they are until they're identified. So if you're farming without the benefit of a rogue gem polishing for you, you could be farming for a while to get the correct amount of a, the specific kind of grades you need. Or if you're not a rogue and you need some money, you can always farm those areas and save up the gems and then sell them as well. So we're going to need a couple of things before we can polish these. We're going to need the spell gem polishing, and we can get this at the Payette Bank for Viril earrings that we can buy at an NPC and a little bit of money. And then after we, and you can see that the next spell that I could get requires uncut polished gems. So I'll need to polish gems for my own spells if I was a young rogue, but not every spell needs gems. So you can see these three traps down here require other things besides gems. Now we'll need a skill called Appraise. This will help us identify gems in the first inventory slot. And we can get this from the Milith Road for a thousand gold. And if we're lucky enough to get a certain item from a daily quest, the flower, then as a reward, we can get Evaluate Item. And with Evaluate Item, we can identify another item. Now the two skills do have a cooldown. So if we have both skills, we can identify gems twice as fast. And that's pretty useful but not required. We need at least just one of them. And we can kind of see here that wizards require a lot of gems. You know, so our primary spell class or classes will require lots of gems. They'll require either finished or uncut gems, but not every spell needs gems as we can see. So uh, we're going to need, as a rogue, we can actually buy gems from a dealer and the dealer is in Rakeshin, so we don't necessarily need to hunt for these gems. So there is a special place in the game called the Black Market, and the Black Market will sell us these gems. To get to the Black Market, we'll need to go to Recreation, which is on the right side of the map, right there. You just click on that box and walk across here. And to find the Black Market, we just need to go up from the port, and it will be kind of the first building on our left-hand side over here. Now this building can only be entered by rogues because it's a rogue only place. So you can see that a shadowy figure let me into the black market and we're in. So inside the black market is an NPC. The NPC does a variety of things. It is a bank so we can deposit and withdraw money and items. So we can also buy useful things here like we can buy songs and wine. Songs allow us to teleport back to Rakesha. We can buy weapons, armor, and some rings that are very useful for low levels. But we, we're here to buy gems. So clicking on the gem icon, we can see we can buy fragments with some prices over here. So if you're polishing gems for people, you'll probably want to charge them more money than the cost that you are polishing the gems for. Typically, you can probably sell gems for at least 100,000 gold apiece. So that's a pretty good return on investment. So we'll buy a beryl and ruby fragment to experiment with our gem polishing. Now you can see that these come as raw. The raw just means they're unidentified. You know, so if we put them into our first inventory slot, that, which is what is required, we can go to our skills, and if we use a praise, we can identify the ruby, and we can see that it is a ruby fragment. Its weight is one, and its value is one thousand. So typically, most things, if you value them, they'll be at one tenth the cost, and that's kind of what you would get when you sell them to an NPC. So if we do the same thing with the Beryl Fragment, or the Raw Beryl, and this time I'll use Evaluate Item, I get pretty much the same information. You know, it's, it's worth 500 instead of that 5,000 and stuff, and we'll just kind of place them in our inventory here. So now let's go and actually like work on polishing these gems and learn how to polish the gems. So I'm going to come over and stand over here, 
Now sometimes there'll be rogues, kind of AFK places, and if you want an assistant, there might be some uh, standing around that you can use as an assistant. This is my alt, Phantom Trap, and sometimes I leave them AFK in places so that way people can have the rogue as an assistant. And only rogues on register accounts can be assistants. Now if we look over here, if we polish with an assistant, we can upgrade the gem's grade by two if we're successful, and if we fail, the gem will not be destroyed. Whereas if we use the alone option, we can only upgrade the gem by one grade, and there's a chance that the gem will be destroyed. It's not a guaranteed fact, but there's a chance. So there are some options where you will fail, but not actually destroy the gem. So this, not, this part is not entirely accurate. So let's say we want a specific kind of gem, like the uncut gem. So if we scroll up, we can see the uncut gem is the next grade after fragment. So if we scroll down and look that if we polish with an assistant, we'll upgrade our gem rank by two. So we'll go straight from fragment to flawed. And this is kind of not what we want. So we're kind of forced to be with the alone strategy and we have a chance at breaking our, our gem to do it, but it's the only way for us to get the uncut. So we kind of have to bite the bullet on that one. But if we want to go to finished, then it'll be better for us to use an assistant because we can upgrade them much quicker at the cost of less labor. Her now labor is like these hidden points in the game. You have about five labor points that regenerate every 12 hours, and they allow you to do a variety of activities that are called work. So gem polishing is working, um, and farming is working, you know, making clothes, tailoring is working, and so on and so forth. So if you use an assistant, you can polish more things. Um, you usually are only able to polish about 10 gems, or at least 10 gem attempts per 12 hours. So you want to make the best out of it. And spend your labor wisely and efficiently to make the most amount of money you can by polishing the most amount of gems you can or doing a variety of other activities that require labor. No need to spend it all in one spot. So how about we practice a little bit of this gem polishing, polishing and see what's all about. So we need to come over here and double click and cast our gem polishing spell and wait for it to cast. It casts a spell underneath our feet, not actually on us. It says we've cast a gem polishing spell. Now we come over here and grab some coin, drag it and drop one coin underneath us. And we'll get this pop-up that says that we can use an assistant or polish alone. I'm going to use an assistant this time around and we'll type in Phantom Trap's name and then we'll click OK. We see that I've mastered gem polishing, I've gained 500 experience, and the gem in my inventory is now raw. So in this game, the game will polish the highest grade gems first. So if I were to continue polishing, the ruby would be polished until it's no longer polished, polishable, and then it will move on to the next highest grade. So once gem ruby has gotten to finished grade, it'll polish the beryl. We don't want that. We want to use. Uh, we're gonna make the Brilla uncut gem, but we'll worry about that later. So first, let's kind of see what this ruby gem has been polished into, right? Because right now it's raw, so we need to identify it. So if we go over to our skill panel and appraise our gem, we see that oh, it is a flawed gem, and that's kind of what we suspected, because when we polished with an assistant on the guide, it said it should jump two grades, so it completely eclipsed the uncut grade and went on to the flawed grade. And if we polish it one more time, it would be finished. Now we need to remove this gem from our inventory if we want to polish an uncut gem or if we do not want to increase the grade of the ruby any further because it always increases the grade of the highest quality gem. So we'll just put this gem over here. And typically uh, players should not steal gems, you know. Um, Dropping gems out of your inventory is the best way to get a variety of gems of the same grade, but people might come by and steal it. So one thing we can do is we can drop the gem underneath us, and we can kind of move so we're hiding it with our feet, and then if we drop coins on it, it kind of hides the gem, and hopefully people don't come and steal it. So now let's kind of upgrade this Brill to an uncut. To do that, we want to gem polish um, by ourselves without an assistant. Now I'm going to recast gem polishing because it only lasts for so long, but you don't have to cast it every time. So we're going to move the coin, drop it, and we're going to select the alone option here. There we go, and we have master gem polishing and we got our uncut beryl, which we might need for our spell or a wizard might need for their spell. 
So we're going to move this from our inventory because I want to pick up that ruby again and finish polishing that to finished. So that way we can get the two gem types so you guys can see how we get the two gem types. So I'm going to get the pop up again by dropping another coin and using an assistant. I've been, but well, we didn't, we did not succeed and we were unable to polish the gem. So this is sometimes a failure, so we'll just do it again because we have some more labor. Type in Phantom Trap's name again. And there we go, we have polished it and it's raw again. So we'll come here and appraise, and lo and behold, we have our finished ruby. So these are the two ways of getting uncuts and finished gems that we can use for a variety of different spells. And hopefully this information will help you and you can polish a bunch of gems for yourself or other people and try and make a little bit of coin while doing it. Now remember that if you're making uncut gems, then you'll need to make, you'll polish a gem once and place it on the ground, polish a gem twice, place it on the ground. Now I recommend that you have the first spot of your inventory, the number one, as not having anything in it, not even including a gem. Because when you polish a gem, it automatically places that gem that was polished into your first inventory slot if that slot is free or in your highest free inventory slot. So that way you'll know exactly what gems have been polished and you can identify and drop those onto the ground. Alternatively, if you're polishing gems for somebody, then you can polish the uncuts one at a time and identify them and then give them to the other person directly by dropping them onto the ground and they can pick them up um, underneath you. So that way you can make sure that no one steals them or you can just transfer directly to the inventory via the trade menu. So remember, if you have a bunch of gems and you want them all to be finished, then you do not need to drop gems on the ground because you will not over polish any gems. You'll just polish the next gem down the line. But if you're making uncuts, you do need to remove them from your inventory. Hopefully this has helped you and thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And links down below for the music and for Dark Ages and everything. Take care.